at it again. And we've got one here with Michael Knows. Shout out to Michael Knows. If you're not subscribed to his YouTube channel, highly encourage you to do so. All right. Highly encourage you. I'm sure most of you guys already know who Michael Knows is, though. You know, come on. It's Michael. All right. Well, before we hop into it, like, share, comment. Hit that subscribe button if you're new. Make sure you're following me on social media, too. Links are down below in the description box. And with that being said, let's dive in. Ho, ho, ho. Merry Advent. It's not Christmas yet, okay? But we are getting ready for Christmas. And we are preparing for Christmas by watching a bunch of woke Christmas TikTok. <laughs> Take it away. Here are some Christmas traditions that we borrowed from pagans, and by borrowed I mean stole, and then condemned, and then rebranded. Number one, Santa Claus. Uh, Santa Claus is actually an old Norse pagan god named Odin, and Odin had a long white beard, and he was old, and he rode around through the sky on an eight-legged horse delivering presents to people. We put a buzzer. Uh, Santa Claus, also known as Jolly Old Saint Nick, is not a pagan god named Odin. Uh, Santa Claus is a saint named Nicholas. That's why we call him Saint Nicholas. And he was said to have given presents to little kids. And what he was also known for was, according to legend, slapping the heresiarch Arius at the Council of Nicaea. The story, probably apocryphal, but legends can tell us a lot about uh, reality as well. It helps you when, when you're talking to people who say, we're going to debunk Christianity. Did you know... Did you know that there's a similarity between this thing that happened in the Gospels and some myth? Therefore, the Gospels are fake, and it's all just a repackaging of a pagan myth. No, no. Christianity is mythical in the sense that it partakes of types. It partakes of grand narrative. It happens to be, however, the true myth. It is a myth that actually happened. Yes, it is mythical for a man to die and then rise from the dead. That's a theme in myth. It also literally happened Surprise, in Christianity. So just because something is mythical does not mean that it can't be true. Number two, the 12 days of Christmas or the concept of Christmas in general. This comes from Yule or winter solstice, which is a 12 day pagan winter holiday. No, put a pause there. That's just so fake. You are fake news. They bring up all these different <laughs> pagan feasts, many of which started after Christmas, by the way. The one that they usually go back to is Sol Invictus. But there are others. She mentions Yule, but there's Sol Invictus, there's Mithras, there's Saturnalia, there are all these feasts. People will say, well, the Christmas holiday was celebrated by the Christians as a way to lure the pagans who were celebrating Sol Invictus over to celebrate their new holiday. But that's not true. The earliest uh, evidence we have of Christmas is the chronography of 354. That's the earliest textual evidence we have of this on a calendar, but it's also the earliest textual evidence we have of the Feast of Sol Invictus. So in all likelihood, the Feast of Sol Invictus was actually made by the pagans as a response to Christianity. The Bishop Hippolytus of Rome explains why Christmas is celebrated on the 25th, and it has nothing to do with some stupid pagan feast. It's because Christians believed that a divine life is perfect, so it's exactly the, a certain number of years. Christ lived exactly for 33 years. And the early Christians understood uh, the conception of Christ to have occurred on Good Friday, which is the day that he died. When you've got the dating of the conception of Christ to Good Friday, then you fast forward nine months later, you get December 25th. And if that coincides even roughly with certain pagan feasts, sure, there, there might be some mythical or pagan celebrations there as well, but Christianity is the true myth. It's not, it's not just a baptizing of certain pagan traditions. It's a thing that really happened. Number three, kiss. This, this, is, this is interesting, and I, I, I love how he's like really going into details, like explaining like, hey, I've heard this kind of stuff before. You know, I, I've, I've never heard this stuff before. This, this woke stuff that this lady is spewing. I, I, I've never really paid attention to it, to be completely honest. Um, but I love how he just like went into detail and like fully explained everything, you know, love that. Learn something new every day, huh? Sing underneath the mistletoe. This plant is really sacred in a lot of pagan rituals. For Romans, it honored the god Saturn and to appease Saturn, they would have fertility rituals underneath the mistletoe. In terms of the mistletoe, I don't really, I don't know, maybe. <laughs> I don't know, I, I like this woman's wrong about everything else, so she's probably wrong about that, but I don't know, maybe, yeah, I don't know. could be. Number four, the Yule Star, in which each point represents one of the five different elements. Pagans used to put this on top of their Yule trees. And lo and behold, uh, we now put stars on top of our Christmas trees, and we have the audacity to call the pentagram satanic. Put, put, a, put a pause there. <laughs> what does the star represent at Christmas time? 
uh, symbol of the occult and the devil, or the star that announced Christmas. The symbol mo probably most associated with Christmas itself. I think it would probably be the latter. Number five, hanging ornaments on trees. Each of these ornaments represented a god like Saturn or even a family's personal patron saints. Number six, decking the halls, wreaths, Christmas trees. Bro, this lady like she seems like she would be a drag to be around. Like, holy fuck. Like, what? <clears throat> My goodness. People like this, like, you just, just stay far away from me. Stay away. Stay away. Let me live my happy little life, okay? <laughs> Stay away from me. I will make fun of you if you come around me with this crap. <laughs> I will roast you. <laughs> you will end up calling me a foe, banist, and all, all types of names because I will roast the crap out of you. Hey, I'm, I'm good at making jokes about people, okay? You come around me and you act like this lady right here. You best believe you could bet your bottom dollar. I'm going to make fun of you to the point where you will leave, which is my goal. <laughs> Carry on. Trees. Pagans would put these up so that they would have some life and some greenery during the otherwise super cold and lifeless winter. Sure. Yeah, that's true. I mean, the image, I was sitting out the other night in my courtyard and I was looking at the dead trees outside and my Christmas tree on the inside with the fire going and the lights on and everything. And I thought, wow, what a beautiful symbol of the incarnation. What a beautiful symbol of Christmas. We are living in this world that has been marked by sin and death, and things die, and we will die too. Life sucks, and then you die. But then you look inside, and you say, wait, there is hope. There actually is hope, and there is life, and there can be life everlasting, like with an evergreen tree. I mean, this is even getting back to her point about the star. Let's not forget the star that announces the birth of Christ is an astrological symbol. Plenty of pagans and occult sort of people looked up to the stars for signs. But because God is the God of the heavens and the earth, and he's the God of everything, he takes that astrological sign and it brings these magi, these non-Christians, non-Jews, over to see the true king, Jesus Christ. Keep going. Seven, Christmas caroling, pagan. Eight, eggnog. What a buzzer. <laughs> singing is pagan now? The pagans get a monopoly on singing? I don't know, man. Keep going. Nine, Yule Log, obviously pagan. And number 10, my favorite, December 25th being Jesus's birthday. It was celebrated as Dies Natalis Solis Invicti, which means the birth of the invincible son. There she is. Dedicated to Mitra, or the Roman soul, until it was stolen by Pope Julius I and made into Jesus's birthday. So the birth of the invincible son became the birth of the invincible son. So again, as I mentioned earlier, that's just completely fake. There's no uh, evidence of that whatsoever. That is bullshit. I would defy that woman to show me the evidence that the Feast of the Unconquered Sun ever existed, that, that it was ever attested to before the, the celebrations of Christmas. She cannot find it. That, that does not exist. No. But furthermore, to go, to go back to what she was saying, eggnog, pagan, cake, pagan, Donkey. pagan. Uh, no, I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think you get to claim dairy, alcohol, and sweets as pagan. If those things are pagan, then I guess everything's pagan. He's pagan. He's pagan. You're pagan. I'm pagan. Are there any other pagans I should know about? Meow. Did you know that the song Jingle Bells was racist? It was written by a rebellious composer who supported the Confederacy and performed the song in blackface. The songwriter James Lord. Put a pause there. We just want to put a pause before we get into whatever nonsense he's saying about Jingle Bells. Blackface is not racist. They'll probably get me in trouble with Media Matters for saying that. It's not racist. Blackface itself, the minstrel tradition, is not racist. Some of the most popular performers in minstrel shows of the sort of blackface type of theater were black men themselves. The creators of some of these characters, I think of the, the character Aunt Jemima, was created by a comedian, a minstrel comedian, Billy Kersans, who was a black guy. To say that all this stuff is racist is to erase much of the American theatrical tradition. Oh, please, God. What they would say is, everyone... In all of history, up until this present moment, every and everyone living today, except for me, is a racist. Because by racist, they just mean bad. We're better than you, and we know it. And everything other than them is bad, so that's 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 what they're insinuating. Okay, keep going. The songwriter. Nah, I, I, listen, listen. Uh, uh, Trudeau, up in up in Canada, he he did the whole blackface thing. So now I, I gotta say it's the racist. I don't like the guy, so it's racist. <laughs> 
I can't let you know get off the hook for nothing. <laughs> this do, do y'all get like this creepy feeling whenever you you see Trudeau, or is it just me? Let me know. Let me know. Let me know. But nah, I'm 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 not letting them slide. No 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 sir. No sir. I can't do it. <laughs> oh man. Anyway, let's jump back in. James Lord Pierpont is the uncle of J P Morgan. You know one of the richest men in America's history. While his father and brother took fiery stands against slavery, Pierpont became the staunch supporter of the Confederacy. Jingle Bell was not always its original name. One Horse Open Sleigh was the name that the composer gave to it. Where did he get the idea from the song, you ask? Although we sing this song during Christmas, it was not intended to be a Christmas song. Some historical accounts report that the tune was first performed for a Thanksgiving service at his church. These performances okay. were performed in blackface. But what is a jingle bell? A jingle bell was a device that was put on the neck of slaves who were the most common to run away during the holiday season. Seeing that it was locked with bells at the end of it, it would jingle as they ran away and give away their location. So this holiday season, I be sure you know your historical facts before you sing a song. I'll be doing more of these during the month of December. So look, I, I'm curious. My interest is peaked here. If he wanted to make that persuasive, he probably would have read the alleged original lyrics to the song, right? Because if you say, okay, actually jingle bells are not just jingle bells. We all know what jingle bells are, but these jingle bells referred to in the song, there are some secret kind of other jingle bells. And there are these super secret racist ones that you never heard of before, but they are, that's really what he's referring to. You say, okay, what were the lyrics? Because the lyrics now are jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride in a one horse open sleigh. The bells obviously aren't referring to a slave running away on his feet. It's re referring to the sleigh. If his argument is, well, no, the song Jingle Bells actually was a totally different song. Well, okay, what are the lyrics? They, but they, I, I doubt that he could tell me what those lyrics are because I suspect his thesis is Bullsh somewhat historically <laughs> dubious. Okay, keep going. I don't want a lot for Christmas. There is just uh, one thing Here we I go need. again. Oh, hey, buddy. Can you believe it's already Christmas time again? Yeah, about that. Can we oh, dial man, back some of that Christmas crap this year and maybe share the season? Share? With who? Me. You're all about celebrating a Jewish kid anyway. Santa's Jewish? No. <gasps> so you lied. No, I'm talking about- the Line gets you on the naughty list. There is no naughty list. Exactly what a kid on the naughty list would say. You mean Dude, no uh, you're not the only holiday. Thank you. Everyone always forgets that. Ah, easy does it, Kwanzaa. I got this. <laughs> of course you do. I mean, think about it. Seven days belong to him, eight belong to me, and 12 to me. Oh my God. What does God have to do with this? Everything, you stupid, secular son of a- All I want for Christmas <laughs> is you. <sighs> I half love this video because I, I do love that the Hanukkah guy is attacking the Christmas guy for not knowing anything about Christmas. But if his argument is that Hanukkah is on the same par as Christmas, that's just ridiculous. ridiculous. Christmas is celebrated by 96% of Americans. Christmas is a major Christian holiday, one of the most important Christian holidays. Hanukkah is celebrated by about 2% of Americans. But even so, you say, okay, well, just because it's a small number of people who celebrate it doesn't mean it's not important, except it's actually not that important because it's not a major Jewish feast. It's a minor Jewish feast. It would be like s celebrating a saint's day, you know, St. Joseph's, the Feast of St. Joseph. I love St. Joseph. It's great. I love to celebrate the Feast of St. Joseph. What is it, March 19th? But it's not on the same par as Christmas or Easter, okay? Likewise. Is that true? Let me know. I, I honestly don't have a clue. I'm, I'm just going to keep it a buck. I'm not about to sit here and act like I, I know about that stuff. Um, you know, other people's religions and stuff. Yeah. I, I, is what he's saying is true? Is it not that big of a celebration? Talk to me. Anybody that is one or knows more about it, talk to me. Otherwise, Hanukkah is not on the same par for Jews as Passover, let's say. Sukkot. Yom Kippur, something like that. And then Kwanzaa is a, a socialist contrivance that was made up in the 1960s. And it was made up by a Looney Tunes socialist at Cal State Long Beach. He ended up getting arrested for torturing and imprisoning women, falsely oh. imprisoning them. He like hit oh. them on the head with a toaster, put soldering irons in their mouth, all sorts of terrible things. Oh. Uh, but it's not celebrated by really anybody. It's celebrated by, I think, 0.2% of Americans. 
totally made up anyway. But I did like, it was kind of funny in the video when, when the Hanukkah guy's like, hey, hold on, Kwanzaa, all right, we don't need to hear from you right now. Okay, let's, let's, let's be real. Because it's Hanukkah is way more legit than Kwanzaa. Happy Chanukka. The equivalence that is made between Christmas, Hanukkah, and Kwanzaa is not about giving Hanukkah and Kwanzaa their due. It's just about attacking Christmas. It's just about tearing down the only actual major feast of the year, okay? And one that is so, so important to American culture as well. That's why we need to take the war on Christmas seriously. The libs always make fun of us for this, for, for getting weirded out when they refuse to utter the word Christmas. They're so, it's, the, it's the holiday that must not be named. Happy holidays? What, ho- what are the holidays? Um, Hanukkah? Do you celebrate Hanukkah? No. Do you know anything about Hanukkah? No. Do you, do you think that Hanukkah is a major feast? Uh, yeah, you don't know, but no. What's the other holiday? Uh, Kwanzaa? Do you know anything? No, no, you don't know. You don't, okay, you don't. It's, it's just Christmas. You just don't want to say it because the culture is turning ever more against Christians. We can say it. It's okay. Well, I won't say it yet because it's not Christmas yet. I'll say Happy Advent. But when it's Christmas, I will say Merry Christmas. Absolutely. Merry Christmas. Um, he is right about that last point, and that's something that I've noticed as well. It, 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 it's, it's quite interesting to see that all happen, you know, uh, and, and maybe this is just because I'm in a, you know, an echo chamber, kind of, and you guys can uh, correct me in the comment section. Maybe, maybe I'm completely wrong about this. Let me know. But I feel like the attack on Christianity has been ratcheting up more and more, you know, a lot of other religions, their beliefs are left alone. Their beliefs are left alone. Nobody says a whole lot about them. But if you're Christian, you have certain beliefs. You're the devil. You're the enemy. You're the worst person ever for believing what you believe. And I just find that quite interesting. And listen, maybe maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it's because I'm living in an echo chamber. All right. And that's the only thing that I'm seeing. I'm living in a tunnel. So I'm not really seeing, you know, all of these other situations and things happening. You guys can let me know in the comment section. I could be wrong. But from what I have personally seen and heard, the attacks on Christianity have ratcheted it up significantly. From what I've personally seen. Um, so, yeah, it, it, it's quite interesting to see that because you sit back and you ask yourself, well, why is that? Why has Christianity become the religion that people like laugh at, that people want to make fun of, that people want to call, you know, Christians like the devil and they're like the worst person ever, yada, yada, yada. Like, why is that? You know, but like I said, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe other religions have, you know, had the same thing happen on a, you know, very similar scale recently as well. Um, Y'all can let me know in the comment section if you guys have seen the same thing. If you haven't, talk to me. And um, yeah. Woke Christmas TikToks. Happy holiday season. All right. And like he said, as well, when Christmas comes around, I'll say Merry Christmas as well. Until then, happy holiday season. Hope it's doing you well. Hope it's treating you well. And uh, like, share, comment. Hit that subscribe button if you're new. Peace and love. I'm out.